Kirchhoff's rules are statements of the conservation of charge and energy in electrical circuits. The first step is to identify how many wires occur in a circuit. Each wire gets its own current. This circuit contains a single wire, so it contains a single current that must follow the wire at each bend. There is only one roadway for the charges to follow. This circuit has three wires. The three wires are more readily apparent if we put little gaps between them. The statement of the conservation of charge at this point is that the current flowing into the point, that's I1, equals the currents that flow out of the point, which are I2 plus I3. This circuit has six wires, which are more readily apparent when we see them with gaps between each wire. Since there are six wires, there will be six currents. Later, we'll arbitrarily pick a positive direction for each current. This circuit also has six wires, which are more readily apparent when we draw gaps between the wires. This circuit will also have six currents, labeled I1 through I6. We will write Kirchhoff's loop rules for this circuit, which has three wires. The three wires are more readily apparent if we draw the circuit again with connections and then without connections. Each of these three wires gets its own current. The arrows indicate the direction we've arbitrarily chosen to be positive for each current. If our calculations find that the current I1 is negative 3 amps, that would mean that the current is actually flowing in the opposite direction than the arrow indicates. As many persons analyze this circuit, everyone would agree on the direction of the current. The wire on the left contains a single current I1. In the lower section, the current is to the left. Here the current is upward and at the top, the current is to the right. A single current flows along this wire. Here again is the full circuit with three wires each having its own current and with 10 resistors and batteries. In this circuit, we have three unknowns, which are the three currents, I1, I2, and I3. To solve for three unknowns, we need three equations. First, Let's write the conservation of charge at point A. The currents flowing into point A, that's I1, equals the currents that flow out of that point, which are I2 plus I3. So we have I1 equals I2 plus I3. At point B, the current arrows that point inward toward point B are I2 plus I3. The arrow for current I1 points away from point B. Again we have I1 equals I2 plus I3, which is no new information. But we do have one equation so far for our three unknowns. This means that we need two more equations, which we'll get by writing the conservation of energy for loop 1, and then the conservation of energy for loop 2. A charge can begin at any point in the circuit for example here, makes a journey around the circuit, returning to its starting place, the sum of the energy gains and losses have to add up to zero in all possible loops. As a charge cycles around the loop, it moves across many resistors and batteries, sometimes gaining energy and sometimes losing energy. The guide on the right reminds us whether a charge will gain or lose energy depending on the directions of the path and the current through any circuit element. Traversing loop 1 in a clockwise direction starting from this point, the charge first crosses the 5 volt battery and the path is moving in the correct direction from short to long sides of the battery symbol. This means that there is a positive energy gain of 5 volts or 5 joules per coulomb. The path next travels through the 6 ohm resistor the direction of the path is to the right, and the direction of the assumed current I1 is to the right, so we write the voltage change as minus IR, which would be minus 6I1. The path next moves the right way from short to long through the 8 volt battery, so we write plus 8 volts. 
The path next moves through the 3 ohm resistor. Since the path direction is downward and the current I2 is downward, both arrows point in the same direction and we choose minus IR or minus 3 I2 as the voltage change. The path next moves through the 10 ohm resistor in the same direction as the current I1. So we choose minus IR or minus 10 I1 as the voltage change in this circuit element. The path next goes the right way through the 2 volt battery. So we write plus 2V. And then both the path and the current I1 point in the same direction. So we write minus IR or minus 4I1 as the voltage change in this element. The path next goes the wrong way from long to short sides of the 4 volt battery, so we write minus 4 volts. We're then back to the beginning point, and the sum of our energy gains and losses must be zero. We have now written the conservation of energy for loop number one. Traversing the loop in the opposite or counterclockwise direction would negate each term and thereby change nothing. When solving a circuit problem, you have to draw a very big picture to have room enough to label the directions of each current and the directions of each loop. We next write the conservation of energy for loop 2, starting and ending at point B. The path first goes through the 3 ohm resistor. Since the direction of the path and the direction of the current I2 point in opposite directions, we write plus IR or plus 3I2 has the energy change in this resistor. The path next goes the wrong way from long to short sides of the 8 volt battery, so we write minus 8 volts. Continuing all the way around the loop gives minus 8I3 plus 6, minus 9I3, minus 11I3 plus 9 equals 0 for the conservation of energy in loop 2. Another possible loop is to go all the way around the outsides. But now we have three equations for our three unknowns, and it's a bit of algebraic footwork to solve for those three currents. The system of three equations can be written as this. To solve this system, you solve equation 1 for I1 and put that into equation 2, which you solve for I2 and then put that into equation 3 which finally gives you a number for I3. Working backwards, we get numbers for I2 and I1. In other circuits, we can quickly get a system of six equations and six unknowns, or even 20 equations and 20 unknowns, which is solved by writing the matrix equation AX equals B. The determinant of A is 704. To obtain the current I1, we substitute the column vector B in place of the first column of matrix A, calculate its determinant, and divide by D to get I1 equals 0 0.514. This is known as Kramer's method. To obtain current I2, we substitute the column vector B in place of the second column of matrix A, calculate its determinant, and divide by D. In this way we find that I2 is 0 0.239 amps. To obtain current I3, we substitute the column vector B this time in place of the third column of matrix A. Calculate its determinant and divide by D to get I3 equals 0 0.276 amps. This circuit has six wires, and so there are six different currents, I1 through I6. We first write as many conservation of charge equations as possible. At point A, the current arrow I1 points inward, and the outward arrows are I2 and I3, so we have I1 equals I2 plus I3. At point B, the inward current I3 equals the outward currents I4 plus I5. 
At point C, the inward currents I4 plus I5 equals the outward current I6. At point D, the current arrows that point inward I2 plus I6 equals the current I1 that points outward. Comparing the equations at points B and C, we see that I3 equals I6. Starting at the 5 volt battery of loop 1, we have plus 5 minus 6 I1 plus 6 minus 8 I2 minus 10 I1 plus 3 minus 4 I1 minus 2 equals 0. Let's zoom in on loop 2 and write the conservation of energy starting at point D. First is this 8 ohm resistor. Here the path is upward and the current I2 is downward. So we write plus 8 I2 as the voltage change. Next we go the wrong way through this battery. So we write minus 6 and then minus 8 I3 plus 8 minus 9 I4 minus 11 I6 plus 10 equals 0. This circuit has 6 wires so it has 6 different currents I1 through I6. We begin with writing the conservation of charge at points A, B, C, and D. This gives us four equations, and then we write two conservation of energy loops. Starting at the 8 ohm resistor of loop 1, we have minus 8 I3 plus 8 minus 9 I3 minus 2 I4 plus 8 I2 minus 6 equals 0. Starting at the 5 ohm resistor of loop 2, we have plus 5I5 plus 2I4 minus 3I6 minus 14I6 plus 10 equals 0.